Mandela, Mandela family, members of the media, residents of the city of Johannesburg, ladies and gentlemen, good morning to you all and welcome. I am delighted to open a prestigious occasion today, a day to confirm the freedom of the city upon an incredible woman, Mama Nomzamo Wini Madikizela Mandela, the mother of the nation, as she was effectively known, who lived most of her life in Soweto. She lived a humble life amongst the people she led as a city. We are honored to have had a woman of her caliber as a resident. Mama Nomzama Willy Madigizela Mandela lived in Johannesburg since 1952, when she moved to the city from her birthplace in the Transkei, except for the nine years when she was banished to Brantford in the Free State. The life of Madigizela Mandela encompasses commitment to community, upliftment, opposition to apartheid and determination to build a non-racial, non-sexist, and democratic South Africa. Her courage and leadership abilities have crumbled over years of political harassment, personal pain, and a wave of media controversy. Her constituency over many years, despite the threats to her life and her daughters, was a testament to her unwavering belief in emancipating for the majority black citizens of this country. Mama Nozama, Willy Matizela Mandela, is a deserving candidate for receiving the freedom of the city. A woman who led us out of the dark days with strength, a passion, and a determination that lights in each of us the world to do more and to be more. She made sacrifices for the sake of freedom endured imprisonment and beating, was separated from her family, and yet she endured. When the dust of the, the democratic struggle settled, she emerged with grace and dignity, working to build communities, assist those in need, and create a better South Africa. Her contribution to our city and country, indeed to the wider world, should be held and recognized. Hers is an example which we all must strive to follow. The uns unselfish pursuit of freedom and dignity for all. Today we honor her contributions, alas, posthumously. But her family is here to bear witness to her astounding achievements. She too is with us in spirit to receive the accolade of freedom of the city. Siabrela Mama, Lala Moto. You have run this race with vigor and passion. We will always remember your tireless contribution to a democratic and fair society. You have multiplied, made your light, ignite in us the will to serve the country with pride and an indelible commitment to uplifting this country to greater heights. I note the following apologies of Dr. Andrew Morangeni and advocate George Bezos due to ill health. I wish them both a speedy recovery. I also note the apology from King Gelatini due to a bereavement. All leave of absences from councillors would also be noted. You don't have to go through the list. Thank you. Item 3, addressed by the Executive Mayor. Mr. Mayor. <laughs> the Speaker of Council. Mr. Speaker, Councillor Vasco da Gama. Our special guests, Zenani and Zinzi Mandela, 
as well as Madikizela and Mandela families, close friends and comrades of the honorary, the Chief Whip of Council, Councillor Kevin Wex, members of the Mayoral Committee, President of the IAC, Mandla Kahlo, that I met earlier on, leader of the DA Democratic Alliance, Mr. Musi Mamani, that I saw earlier on, leaders of all political parties present here that I've not really seen as yet, and I trust that they are here. I was expecting the Deputy President of the EFF, uh, Mr. Fletcher Bambu, I'm not sure if uh, he's here already, and Advocate uh, uh, Dalim Pofu. <laughs> Fellow councillors, veterans, stalwarts of our various organizations present uh, this morning, our city manager, Dr. Lukoreni, Managers and officials of the City Council of Johannesburg, distinguished guests, the media, fellow citizens of the City of Johannesburg. Mr. Speaker, I'm sure as everyone gathered in these chambers today, when I say it is indeed a great honor to be part of an occasion in which the City of Johannesburg confers the status of freedom of the city on one of our most illustrious citizens, Mrs. Winnie Madikizela Mandela. This honor is long overdue. To Zenani and Zinzi, it is indeed a shameful that we had to wait until the passing of Mam Winnie to recognize her, to, to her, in her contribution to this country's freedom. You, more than most, know that after all what she had been through in her life, this was the least we could do to honor her memory and extend our gratitude to her many sacrifices that she made. But for reasons now known to us, she had gained notoriety and stands as a figure of controversy rather than a symbol of resistance, defiance, and hope to many of us. Ladies and gentlemen, few names evoke a rush of mixed emotions and reactions like that of Winnie Madikezela Mandela. However ambivalent you were about her, you are at least felt some kind of way about her enigmatic or honorary. But take a look at how this woman was and still is portrayed in the mainstream media as well as by some analysts and commentators, and you will realize that the authors of history did quite a number on her. From humble beginnings in the Eastern Cape, Mam Winnie would rise to assume prime position in the latter, more tumultuous stages of South Africa's anti-apartheid struggle. Although checkered, her most recent past signified the life of an individual who was largely shaped by the harsh reality she was forced to endure, all by her lonesome. Winnie was a woman of her time. There is no doubt that South Africa has all but forgotten and is largely unappreciative of the role that this woman played in shaping our history. In the 1960s and the much of the 70s, when the ANC and other liberation movements were bent and forced underground, it was Winnie who kept the flame of liberation burning. When South Africa's memories of Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu, and others were beginning to fade, it was Winnie who refreshed our collective memories, putting her then incarcerated husband top of our mind. When the nationalist government threw what they thought they relegated the memory of Nelson Mandela to the dustbins of history, Winnie revived it. In one of her many memorable quotes, Winnie put it to the government's belief that it could make the black majority forget about Mandela when she said, and I quote her, they think because they put my husband on an island that he will be forgotten. 
they are wrong. The harder they try to silence him, the louder I will become. Close quote. With this weight, she launched herself onto the national stage and became the unstoppable force we know today. When the apartheid security machinery was at its most supreme, crushing every sign of resistance and hope of freedom was fading faster by the day, it was Winnie who, through her defiance, taught us to persevere. And so she continued alone and defiant through the 1980s when faced with the reality that the grip on power was losing by the day, apartheid homongers turned to their most brutal instinct. Despite the threats, she remained defiant and continued to speak truth to power. But Winnie's many sacrifices and contributions have been reduced to nothing more than a footnote in the pages of the history of men. We see this in the manner in which she was often referred, largely as Nelson Mandela's wife, nothing more. Those who did this seem to forget that she was her own person, a woman of first, the first black social worker in our country a caregiver of note whose earlier contribution as a social worker are all but forgotten. Winnie Madikezela Mandela's belief in the centrality of individual freedom alongside the need for social and economic freedom as best means for creating a free society should resonate with all of us. Through her numerous acts of defiance, she thought not only to protest against the evil policies that were implemented by the apartheid government, but also protested against the apartheid government itself. Hers was a protest for freedom and equal franchise within her own country. Hers was also a protest for the right to quality basic services, the right to have access to proper schooling and health care, the right to access to economic opportunities, and the right to pursue a life lived with complete dignity. But she was met with intimidation, brutality, torture, and isolation even from her young daughters. While this was not the most stable environment, it certainly gave her a sense of personal independence and saw her undergo a transformation from a young, perhaps naive mother, raising two little girls to a battle battle scarred activist, absolutely no fear of the brutal apartheid government. Who can forget when she emerged from one of her many stings in, in detention only to declare, there is no longer anything I can fear. There is nothing the government has done to me. There isn't any pain I haven't known. It was the sense of independence and a desire to live in true freedom that drove Winnie to persevere against all odds and drove her to continue to be a compelling figure in the history of post-apartheid South Africa. In those dark days of apartheid, when the government of the day did everything in its power to prevent a black person from succeeding, Winnie was steadfast in the belief that a minority could not under determine the destiny of majority black South Africans. At a time of racial and tribal tensions, Winnie spoke of black unity. I could borrow from her words, but seeing as we are here to honor her, it would be best to allow her to speak for herself. In her own words, she instructed us as follows, and I quote, it is only when all black groups join hands and speak with one voice that we shall be a bargaining force which will decide its own destiny should go on to emphasize this point, declaring, and again a quote, if you are free from yourself, you must break the chains of oppression yourselves. Only then can we express our dignity. Only when we have liberated ourselves, we can cooperate with other groups. Any acceptance of humiliation, indignity, or insult is acceptable, uh, acceptable of inferiority. I wish we could heed Winnie's words, especially at this moment in our nation's history, 
when our daily troubles seem to force us to turn on each other when we should be more united than ever by our common goals. I fear that as we continue to see each other as enemies or competitors for their scant resources available, we will be distracted from the bigger objective of the sort of true liberation we need long for, that of political and most importantly, economic liberation. Despite the many obstacles, we need to fight a struggle will ultimately lead South Africa to the country's first democratic elections in April 1994. Sadly, despite our advance into democracy and peaceful government, aspects of pre-1994 South Africa continue to linger. Her dream of a democratic South Africa, and all of which is signified, remains this day a dream deferred for many of our people, particularly for millions of our youth who struggle against poverty and poor access to even the most basic of public services. For me, at the very least, it is clear that despite South Africa's democratic dispensation, far too many of our people continue to live under the same harsh socioeconomic realities that so many of us lived under while growing up. Speaking with a sense of betrayal before the passing of Madiba, Winnie lamented the gross levels of corruption experienced in our country. She pointed out that this, was, this is not what she and many other heroes and heroines had fought for. The sharp pain she must have felt at the state of South Africa was unmissable when she not, noted, and I quote it, all that we fought for is not what is going on right now. It is a tragedy that he lived and saw what was happening. We cannot pretend like South Africa is not in crisis. Our country is in crisis. And anyone who cannot see this is just bluffing themselves. Close quote. Present day South Africa obviously does not represent the dream that Winnie fought for. No, it is the dream so many forgotten heroes so hard to realize. Today in our city, almost 900,000 of our people are without jobs. In other words, one in three people residing in the city of Johannesburg are denied the means to earn a living and, and struggle on a daily basis to take care of themselves and their families. Young people are even hard, hard ahead by the lack of opportunities in our city, with 40% of young people unable to find work. Nationally, more than 9 million people are without work today. This includes a large group that has given up looking for work. This is a matter that will require us to put our party political affiliations aside, forget our political ideologies, and combine our heads to find solutions to the ticking time bomb that is youth unemployment. We must agree that our public education system is broken and must be rebuilt in order to give our children a glimmer of hope that they can become competitive members of the global community. We must dedicate the lion's share of our national resources to us fixing our schools and training our teachers to better groom our children into tomorrow's leaders. I am of the firm view that every developing nation, South Africa included, should embrace free quality education if it is to stand any chance of growing beyond a nation of great potential. The resources are there in abundance. What is needed is the political will to do away with nice-to-do projects and to push those resources towards building our children's future. To this end, it is my firm view that some of the failures we witness in our daily education system should be attributed to the disruptive role of our labor in education. As such, the national government should be bold enough to set boundaries and actually separate unit movement in the education of our children. This is not to say that teachers should not enjoy union protection, but it is the extent to which some unions have been allowed to dictate matters much to the detriment of our children that is of concern to me. This matter should be treated with agency, especially if we take into account 
the horrific reality that 80% of our public schools are failing and in crisis to be there. Distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen, we need to get Mandela's consistency over many years in pursuit of social justice for the black majority, despite the threats to her life and those of her daughters, was a testament to an unflinching belief in the idea of total emancipation for the black citizens of this country. However, such cannot be said for some of the men who surrounded her, who buckled under pressure of apartheid muscle and proceeded to dishonor the cause for freedom while spreading falsehood and insinuations about her. Such is the life of a woman in struggle, forced to labor in solitude only for the victors and the surrogates to rubbish her contribution and sully her memory. But the German historian Leopold van Ranke teaches us that this was to be expected. In seeking to understand why history was often slanted and lacking the fullness of the events recorded, von Ranke made a distinction between three kinds of history, largely credited as the field of, uh, of uh, empirical research-based history, von Ranke distinguished between three kinds of history as follows. Firstly, he made note of the actual event, the details of which are lost forever. Secondly, he identified the second kind of history as the reconstruction of the event, which he observed as the kind of exercise which could be undertaken only through research and verified accountable and measured sources. The last kind of history von Ranke identified as the history we find in books, which he points out, which he points out put there by people in power to promote a certain viewpoint or message, and it's almost always wrong. Van Ranke went on to observe that the powerful in society were prone to use history as a tool and record it to accomplish a particular philosophy or achieve a desired end. Revered British Prime Minister Winston Churchill would years later expand on Van Ranke's thinking by declaring that history is normally written by victors. Although Van Ranke and Churchill made this observation in the 1800s as well as in the 1900s, respectively, perhaps largely influenced by what they had encountered in those times. They may as well have been referring to the treatment of this woman, Winnie Mandela, by authors of South Africa's history of the so-called victors. The current narrative around how our history unfolds does not recognize this woman. It is though the drafters of history are ignoring her and are deliberately erasing her from our history. But, fortunate enough, fortunate enough, the August 2016 elections ushered in a new era in our country. <laughs> the aftermath of that election has provided all of us an opportunity to set matters right and recognize all our heroes, especially this woman, Winnie Madikisela Mandela. It is an opportunity for every councillor or council to ensure that Winnie, the mother of the nation, is not erased from our history. It is an opportunity to ensure that she is immortalized. The moment is not about writing history in favor of, of one party or another. It is about recognizing an individual who paid her dues. Ladies and gentlemen, I had the fortune of briefly meeting Mama White Mandela uh, a short time before her passing. I was humbled by her encouragement and praise for our, our, the work of our multi-party government was undertaking, in particular, our inner city rejuvenation project. I informed her of our desire to build the inner city, turning it into a construction site and providing quality, low-cost housing for our people. In our engagement, she expressed an interest in joining me at one of our monthly RSA cleanup campaigns. I would have really loved the opportunity to be side by side with her on this initiative, but 
because of her ill health, it was decided that it would be best to allow her to rest and gain strength. But I would like to carry on the spirit of Arisabet saying in an honor and ensure that this initiative involves other spheres of our service as government. I was also pleased to know that she was enthusiastic about our inner city plan. As a person who devoted herself to improving the lives of the underdog personally, professionally, and politically, she told me that she was proud that the city of Johannesburg was prioritizing this pro uh, project. Distinguished guest, history should never be subjective. Instead, it should be an exercise in recording events as they happened, and additionally, to capture those events in the fullness and context. Irrespective of how we feel about our particular individuals, we, re we should recognize their contribution and understand there was a time when they did good. We should never allow a select few individuals the vast power to be able to decide which history should be recorded and how that history should be recorded. If we allow that, we will end up hating the people who played significant roles in the attainment of our freedom and who in the process sacrificed much. I'm deeply concerned at the subjective manner with which our history is recorded. Most of us grew up with a skewed sense of ourselves, primarily because of what history we had been taught at school falsely told us about ourselves. Unfortunately, this is the same skewed sense of self that many of our children will grow up with. But as we confer the freedom of the city of Johannesburg on Winnie Madikizela Mandela, we seek not to impose our version of history like the victors have done, but merely to insert significant parts which have otherwise been deliberately omitted in order to create a particular memory of this wonderful woman. We do this in order to create a holistic picture of a woman who was a, who was a time who was, spoused of, who was espoused as the best in us and perhaps the worst of excuse, excuses. As we declare, as we declare, we are Winnie Mandikizela Mandela, and she is us. In closing, I wish to say that we all will always need people like Mama Winnie Mandela. They will inspire commitment and determination in all of us who wish to bring meaning into the lives of others. I would therefore like those of us gathered here today to be grateful for her contribution of life for the way in which she sought to put service of others first. All of us, all of her pursuits, is clear that she was a woman who loved her people and her, and her country and was driven to make a difference in those lives she touched. Many lives were shaped by Winnie's uh, through, throughout her life as an activist and the value of service that she instilled in those she encountered throughout her life will live on those who knew her and will emulate by those who seek to live in a comparable life. I have no doubt that her sense of service extended to her family. It is necessary, therefore, to thank the Madikizela and Mandela families for sharing health with the people of South Africa, for sacrificing your precious family time so that she could bring us freedom. I hope that you all gain strength from the legacy she has left behind. A life well lived deserves to be celebrated and emulated and would be well served by remembering each one of Winnie's values that resonate with us, that we can take forward into our interaction and civic activities. I therefore call on this council to expedite the approval of a proposal to name the city of Johannesburg Council Chambers after this wonderful woman. Additionally, Mrs. Madikezala Mandela's family has requested that the city of Johannesburg honor the mother of, the na of our nation by hosting the Winnie Madikezala Mandela's children's parliament at least once a year in this chambers. <laughs> Should council accede to this request, it would only be proper to host the children's parliament on September the 26th, 26, that is tomorrow, obviously going forward, because this is the date of this wonderful woman's birthday. 
and advance for the rights of uh, children and the youth, especially since the 1976 students' uprising, hosting a children's parliament in an on in a honor, and these chambers would be a fitting tribute to a freedom fighter who has been betrayed by the beneficiaries of the freedom she fought for. Winnie Madikezela Mandela deserve much or higher honors than the ones we are proposing to bestow upon him. But it is the least we can do in appreciation of a life lived for the upliftment of all of us as South Africans. So to the family, thank you very much for honoring our, this council's request that we have this function. We will forever cherish it. Thank you very much. Mayor, free men and free women of the city, the chairperson of the ANC in Johannesburg, Comrade Mulanta Jeffrey Makubu, the regional secretary of the ANC in Johannesburg, Comrade Dada Morero, and the entire collective, esteemed family members, the Mandela and Matikizela family, the daughters, my sisters, of Mama Wini. Comrade Zenani, the inaugural Deputy President of the Soweto Youth Congress, Comrade Zinzi Mandela. <laughs> the grandchildren and the great-grandchildren of Mama, leaders of all political parties present, NC caucus and all caucuses present, fellow councillors, Guests in the gallery, residents of Johannesburg, ladies and gentlemen, comrades, comp compatriots, and friends. It is indeed a great honor for me to speak on this august occasion, which honors the selfless contribution of a revolutionary who had deep love for her people. Let me acknowledge as I speak, the veteran of our revolution, the surviving leader of the 1956 Women's March, a free woman of the city, and Sophie de Brain. <laughs> On a sad note, four days ago we received the sad news of the passing of our minister and comrade, our leader, Comrade Edna Mulewa. The ANC caucus would like to send condolences to the family of the minister as well as the African National Congress. On an occasion like this, I would like to borrow Pablo Neruda's analogy of time as an entity divided into two rivers. One flows backward devouring life already lived, the other moves forward with you, exposing your life. If indeed time is divided into two rivers, then as we look back at the past and the present, we can assuredly say that both the struggle 
for liberation and the new society we strive to build have been deeply enriched by the magnitude of Mama Winnie's contribution. We are able to say that we are fortunate that she always took the present into her hands. Her contribution to everything we had to do throughout the struggle to set our country and its people on a new path of liberty and hope has been immense. I would like to believe that by now all of us are familiar with Mama's biography, which has been written extensively and which I will briefly reflect on its meaning later. However, I must repeat that her biography tells us that for 62 years, from 1956, when she worked as a social worker at Bar Baragwana Hospital, to 2018, when she finally left us, Comrade Winnie Madikizela Mandela was a loyal member and activist of the African National Congress, the People's Movement. <laughs> to paraphrase Comrade Mbeki, it therefore stands to reason that a membership of the ANC surely defined in very good measure who Nomzamo Madikizela was and dictated what she did. This is because, as we all know, the six decades during which Comrade Winnie was a member and activists of the ANC were very critical in the process of the making and transformation of South Africa and therefore the evolution of the ANC itself. Thus, in Winnie Mandela, we had one of those comrades who had been present as an actor in the process. I have just mentioned of the making and transformation of our country and the evolution of the ANC. As we all know, this was a process which, uh, which among others, included a most determined and multi-sided struggle within South Africa with the liber liberation movement broadly united around the Freedom Charter, combined with a similarly determined and truly massive international movement of anti-apartheid solidarity. Both paradigms, the domestic and the international, obliged the apartheid regime to enter into negotiations with the liberation movement to end the system of white minority rule, which led to the moment wherein we said, free at last, followed by democratic elections since 1994, with the ANC being a leader nationally during our years of democratic rule. All these were great victories in themselves. As South Africans and indeed Johannesburg, we have owed it to the architects of each of these victories to bestow on them the deserved accolades. And of course, those accolades are finally due to all those including the masses of our people whose collective actions finally brought freedom to our country. Nomzamo, Wini, Madikizela, Mandela occupies an honored place among those who must receive these accolades. We have gathered here today to confer the honor of the freedom of the city to a very dear comrade, mother of the nation, a preeminent daughter of the city, Mama Nomzamo, Winifred, Madikizela, Mandela. I would like to state that this is a continuation of what successive governments of the city of Johannesburg had done in honoring luminaries of this great city, like Nelson Mandela, Walter Sisulu, Albertina Sisulu, and Beas Nodier. It was, however, in the previous term of office between 2011 and 2016, that the then Speaker of Council, the late Comrade Cody Mabella, may her revolutionary soul rest in peace, proposed to the political management team that the city should honor women, especially brave women, freedom fighters, who have contributed immensely to the liberation of South Africa and the building of Johannesburg, our city. We appreciated at that time that there are countless heroines in Johannesburg, both sung and unsung. After much debate and agreement was that conferments of the freedom of the city will be as follows. 
Leaders of the 1956 Women's March, Mama Sophie de Brain, Merahima Musa, Melilien Goy, Mehelen Joseph. The surviving Rivonia trialists sent their lawyers, Andrew Langeni and Dr. George Bezos. To the mother of the nation as well, Mama Winnie Matikizela Mandela. Confirmance of the freedom of the city can only happen every second year. Hence, all were done except the confinement of Comrade Winnie Mandela. I am, however, delighted today, and on behalf of the ANC caucus, would like to thank all councillors and all political parties in the city for supporting the ANC motion to confer to Comrade Winnie Mandela freedom of Johannesburg posthumously. I am happy that we could put our political differences aside and honor the daughter of the soil, this daughter of Pondoland, this daughter of Johannesburg, and indeed the leader of our people. At the same time, I would like to pay a tribute to the late Connie Babela for her vision and a quest for putting the correct narrative of our history, for ensuring the heroines of our city are recognized women who held the sharp end of the knife. However, it must be surely be a matter of common cause among all of us that truly to honor these great patriots requires more than these praises we ought to indeed shower on them. What is imperative in addition is that we must do our best to ensure that the example set and the legacy left behind by these patriots should serve to inspire the present and future generations to emulate the example and build on that legacy. Accordingly, as we bestow Comrade Winnie Mandela with all due accolades, we must also surely repeat, uh, uh, surely repeat together that let us nurture a million more Winnie Mandelas. Winnie Mandela must multiply, and indeed she has. The accolade. The accolade of the freedom of the city of Johannesburg, which should be and is one of many, is befitting to this daughter of Johannesburg and indeed the mother of the South African nation. To that extent, the ANC has declared this week the Winnie Mandela Week to celebrate her birthday. On 2nd April 2018, South Africa, Africa and the diaspora as well as the various progressive forces in the international community, received news of the untimely death of one of the most formidable soldiers to come out of the African National Congress. News that sent shockwaves across all these landscapes and forced society to confront conversations about the valuable roles women played in the dismantling of apartheid and ultimately the realization realization of freedom. Nomzamo, Nobandla, Winifred, Madikizela, the fifth of nine children, was born in the village of Mbongwe in Ibizana, in the Transkai on 26 September 1936 to parents Columbus and Gertrude Madikizela. She would later in her life marry Nelson Mandela, a union that propelled her marriage to the African National Congress a marriage to the struggle for liberation, and a marriage to the freedom-loving people of South Africa. Nelson Mandela, Winnie Mandela, and indeed the entire family shared a commitment to the dismantling of apartheid, and like thousands of other South Africans, suffered pain, separation, incarceration, poverty, and daily indignities for their commitment. After Nelson Mandela's notable imprisonment in 1962, including the imprisonment and banishment into exile of a number of political leaders, Winnie was not only Mandela's assumed spokesperson, but also a militant political activist in her own right. Over the following decades, she suffered a number of abuses at the hands of the apartheid state. She was banned from attending meetings or giving speeches. She was imprisoned 
for 491 days, the majority of which was spent in solitary confinement. And in 1977, she was banished to the Free State town of Granford, located about 350 kilometers away from her home, Soweto, Johannesburg, and her political base. In defiance of her burning, burning orders, Winnie returned to her home in 1985, a homecoming that coincided with the most sustained period of rebellion, rebellion in South Africa's history. A state of emergency was in effect as a youth engaged in an open revolt against the state security forces. Violence, inflicted for both personal and political reasons, had become pervasive and to a large extent an unavoidable feature of township life. Winnie Mandela became an emblematic figure to many South Africans at this critical juncture and frequently voiced their opposition to the apartheid state by speaking at funerals and political rallies. She was politically well known for a fierce advocacy of militant action in making townships ungovernable and toppling the apartheid regime, which earned her widespread recognition, particularly from the militant youth now in the forefront of the struggle. While her speeches were commonly infused with revolutionary rhetoric, her discourse also emphasized her identity as a, mother, as a mother, not just to her own children, but to her community as, as a whole, I can attest to that. She was my nanny, she looked after my baby. By making repeated references to the suffering of children and women's maternal duty to protect against and even avenge the suffering. When she spoke as a militant as a, and a mother, Winnie Mandela was not inventing a new discourse but drawing on a strong tradition of maternal militancy in South Africa and abroad, and abroad a strategy termed motherism by historian Professor Tema Kaplan, also referred to as militant motherhood. In South Africa, motherism had long been the first point of entry for women across multiple ethnicities and affiliations into the political realm. Yet we employed the discourse of militant motherhood in ways that were novel in the South African case. First, she promoted a more assertive and less traditional role for women in the defiance of gender norms and male authority. Subsequently, redefining her relationship with men through politics and showing other women they could do the same. Second, she not only talked about militancy, but also physically embodied it in her actions and relationships with township youth. For this, she was greatly admired by many Soweto residents, particularly politicized women and militant youth, and remains revered as the mother of the nation to many involved in the struggle today. Between 1986 and 1989, Winnie increasingly became the target in the meta in the number of controversies regarding her perceived relationships with violence, yet many of the ways in which she was criticized were distinctly shaped by gender discourses of female violence. This shape took the form of the exacerbated patriarchal nature of struggle politics in South Africa, the idea that women served as secondary members in the arena of struggle those that merely served to provide comfort to the primary members. But as she became engaged in a type of violence far removed from the bounds of acceptable female behavior, she was increasingly portrayed by the media not as a mother of the nation, but as a monster more akin to Lady Macbeth. How wrong were they? Throughout her activism, Winnie repeat, repeatedly centered her public persona around her identity as a mother in order to highlight how her maternal duties mandated her militant engagement with the apartheid state. This public focus on motherhood was now, was not new for Winnie, who played an important role in the Black Parents Association in 1976, established a crash and children's clinic while in Brantford and provided shelter to politicized youth following her return to Soweto. 
the success of a self-styled identity is reflected in the discourse used by others to talk about her. For few media reports mention her name without referring to her as a mother of the, of the nation, Umamawe too. A notable aspect was that while demonstrating a more assertive role for women, Winnie refused to relinquish her femininity. She, she maintained a dis distinctly feminine image. She was repeatedly described in media reports as beautiful. Of course she was. As charismatic presence who exudes sensuality and sexuality. Yet she simultaneously exuded militancy. She was known for wearing military attire, khaki jumpsuits, jumpsuits, camouflage patterns and berets, often adorned with jewelry in ANC colors. She used her clothing as an outlet of defiance, frequently wearing traditional African garments or party ANC colors to public events, even though she was banned from doing so. At a time when women's political involvement was con constrained by a number of obstacles, Winnie appeared as a symbol of defiance against traditional gender norms. She was neither meek nor submissive and refused to be controlled by any male activist involved in the struggle, even her own husband. After Mandela was released from 27 years of imprisonment in 1990, he was cast as an icon a hollowed out representation of the nationalist father of the nation, the leader in whose name resistors could act. His incar incarceration itself signified the imprisonment of all black people in a repressive system whose liberation symbolized the moment of freedom. Yet Mandela could not have functioned as this kind of icon without the figure of his wife, Winnie Matikizela Mandela the correlate mother of the nation, the woman through whom Mandela could be reached and whose every visit to her husband on Robben Island was watched for a political signal. For ANC and mass democratic movement activists, the, the Robben Island visits were politically important. What message did Mandela have for the nation? Did he support this or that strategy? Was he proud of this nation? Throughout his incarceration, when he stood in for Nelson, sometimes acting as his uh, fendricolist and other times using the space that the iconic state has created to advance an iconic political position of her own. In her most famous of accounts, she solidified her identity as a soldier who rewrote the narrative of the struggle for herself and for the many black women who are married to struggle activists, and yet their own, and sometimes different political consciousness. She reflected on the impact that her marriage to Nelson Mandela had on herself. She said, suddenly I discovered, oh, I have a name now. Everything I did was as Mandela's wife. I lost my individuality. Mandela's wife said this. Mandela's wife was arrested. It did not matter who the hell I was. It did not matter that I was a Matiki sailor. It did not matter that was, I was a human being. So I thought, my goodness, I've grown up a princess in my own home. I came from the royal house of Pondoland and suddenly I've lost my identity because of this struggle. I am going to fix this. I will fight them and I will establish my own identity. I deliberately did that. I said I was not going to bask in his shadow and be known as Mandela's wife. They were going to know me as Zaniwe Matikizela. I fought for that. I said I will not bask even in his politics. I am going to form my own identity because I never did bask in his ideas. That was what Winnie Mandela said. And finally, to echo the tribute given by the Deputy President of the Republic, Comrade David Mabuza, Nomzamo Wetu, Nomzamo Wabantu, 
You are the ancient gift of our ancestors and the undying promise of our children. In letting go, we surrender to the call of the universe that it is time our ancestors wipe the tears etched in your soul, which in life you refuse to shed. You taught young women across the nation that they are just as capable, if not more capable, of standing shoulder to shoulder with men and being totally unapologetic about it. Till death, you knew who your enemy was. Racial domination, class exploitation, I'm sorry, and gender oppression. Yours was a contemporary face of the mother of the human race. Bokoto. Malibongwe iga malamkoskazi. Proud descendants of Nguchana and Sutu. You fought a good fight, despite their cruelty, humiliation, and torture. You return with no broken back to our kings Mpondo and Faku. Pakama nomza mwetu. Pakama, mother of the nation. Pakama, our beloved heroine. Winnie Mandela. Beautiful and brave as she is. Long live nomza mozanyiwe Winnie Fred, Madikzela Mandela. Long live. But I shall not conclude, I think I still have a few minutes, before a, I'm paying tribute to Winnie Mandela. I'm paying tribute to Winnie Mandela, by the way. Um, I'm reading a poem from Dr. Odomaro Mumbagizi from Zimbabwe. He wrote this after Mama's passing. He says, you fought the good fight. You won the race. You fought the good fight. You fought the good fight, O oh gallant daughter of Africa, and liberated South Africa. You fought a good fight. You fought a good fight and defeated the infamous apartheid. With being afraid, you fought the good fight. You fought the good fight and stood by Madiba. Now you will join him in eternity. You fought the good fight. You fought the good fight amidst slender and calumny and kept internal harmony. You fought the good fight. You fought the good fight and left a lasting legacy, a firm foundation for democracy. You fought a good fight. You fought a good fight, so rest in peace and enjoy divine grace, for you fought the good fight. Malibongwe! It's so difficult to speak after you have done your rendition, you know. I really respect you, and um, you said everything. You know what you did to me, Mama Kuena? You made me change my speech. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, You know, 
before I do the normal protocol and acknowledgements, um, I'm speaking to Mama Kwena as I'm still busy. Um, you know, books, research material, newspapers, historians, has never been my authority on Mama Wini. I had the occasion of meeting her in Nwarkasak by Mama Vesta's house. I had the occasion with her in 1976, in the March. I had many occasions with her. I'm from Nwarkasak, and I, I lived it opposite Mama Vesta. That house was a, what do you call it, a departure lounge for the exiles. Um, yeah, the, um, I, I want to take you on this political journey with me, and um, what I've said in the past, this, what I'm going to say today, is, is not what I've said in the past, the two last speeches, that was fine, it was good for, 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 for the audience, but this is truth, that I'm going to talk through today, about Mama. Um, Mr. Speaker, Executive Mayor, MMCs, Ambassadors, Consul Generals, members of the media, members of the African National Congress, DA, all political leaders that's present here today. Um, and the Mandela family. You know, I am happy to have met Mama Winnie at Anne Vesta's house when I was 12 years old. That was 1974. That wasn't in 1976. The house of Mama V was frequented by Curtis and Kondo. His son and myself, we were friends. I think he's, he's, he's listening to my phone these days. I know where he's working. River. And um, other luminaries... I, I'm happy to say that I, I was born in Spain. I'm still living in Wurgesag. Like Mama Winnie, I didn't move. I mean, I'm so wait, I'll stay there, I'll die there. The, um, Wurgesag, we had people living in Wurgesag like J.B. Max and his wife. And Gladys, I remember, she had a typing machine. We used to go there, Model Street, Konamor and Fahey Street. I remember Madiba used to hide at a uh, at the house of the grievers. The mother is still alive there. Many things happen in Wurgesig, and um, in Wurgesig, and I want to use the word colored, colored advisedly. Most colors, well, I see some of us look alike here. <laughs> Most colors joined the liberation struggle, and they came from Wurgesig. The majority that went out of the country are from Wurgesig. Whether they joined MK, whether they joined APLA, they're from Wurgesig. Even that movie, what is that movie's name? Molofish talks about Nurgesag. <laughs> Everything happened in Nurgesag, and, and, and one is, is happy to have been part of, um, of history. As I said earlier, no books, no nothing. I can't read about something. We knew, we knew people. And um, I, I, I remember that um, at Mama Vesta's house, you know, we had, it was a it was a, a, a water hole, political water hole. It was there where we drank from the fountain of wisdom, where we were exposed to people that we never knew they're going to be these big names today. Mama Winnie was just also just normal. I remember Mama Winnie, Mama Winnie was giving me something. She, she pinched my ear because I stole Mama Vesta's milk. They used to deliver milk on the stoop. You know those big fat bottles. Those were my age. Just check my my hair color. And um, they called me a name, and I hate that name, but I want to tell you what Mama Winnie called me. I, I think um, Councillor uh, Dami will know that name. My husband matched with me in 76 with Mama Winnie. They called me Kekeleza. <laughs> and you know what Kekeleza means. And I, I didn't politically Kekeleza. I said Kekeleza when I wanted to, but not politically. <laughs> and um, they abbreviated to KK. And... Um, yeah, so that was a name. I don't think Mama Winnie knew the name Basil ever. Even when I was in Parliament with her in 1999, even she always called me this name, KK. And I, please don't, don't, don't use that name in mixed company. This is the last time I'm telling you this. Yeah, 
Mama Winnie, if I remember, because we started with Oti back, I, he suddenly received the order of the Baobab the other day, uh, silver, same street, Smith Street, again on Street, a few, a few doors away. That was a, polit it was a, it was a political haven, you know, everything, but it was a varsity, it was a varsity street. And um, what, what, what I really appreciated of Mama Winnie then, because we coming from black consciousness, eventually I ended up PSC and so forth with Patricia Diller, yes, Patricia Diller, my, my sister, Patricia Diller. Ideology, when Mama Winnie was around, there wasn't a, a, you know, nobody was handcuffed to your ideology. There was a mixture of black consciousness, there was a mixture of, a mixture of Africanness, there was a mixture, mixture of chatters. You know that Zappo came the other time, the other day also. Imagine Steve Biko also came to know us. We were, we were fortunate. And um, Mama Winnie, the only thing that we really spoke about there by Mama V's house was, was the four R's. Revolution, revolt, rebellion, and resistance. That is what we spoke about. It was there that we read books. Where these books come from? I don't know. The books was there. There was anti during was Engels, there was Marx, volume Das Kapital, one, two, three. You know, we really had the opportunity of reading banned books. Mama Winnie brought a lot of banned books. That house was full of banned books, and Mama Winnie was soon to be banned again. So, uh, as I said, the, the house there was also a recruitment center. Mama Winnie sent my friends, there was, there's a lot of MKs there. Mama Winnie sent them. I'll come and tell you what, who Mama Winnie introduced me to. I'll come to that later. And send us on missions. I won't elaborate later on the missions because I didn't apply to, to the TRC for amnesty. But I'll tell you, I'll just give you two names of some commanders that sent us. What is that, Tuma Mina? Ne? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was this young boy, 12 years old, sitting there with all the big, the big guns, with my afro. I used to have an afro. It doesn't look like this, but I used to wear an afro, Esther. Um, it wasn't black like me. <laughs> Allow me, allow me to take you to a very, very sad moment in my life. 1976, June 16th, Wednesday, June 16th, where I lost six friends. Yes, some of you, if you were there, you will remember that we March, North Kastach was the only township that was part of the March. I'm using the word color township again advisedly, Mr. Maku, councillor. Yes, we marched, and you know what we were going to do? Of course, Mama Winnie was what in 76. We were going to march to John Foster Square to ask for the release of Mandela, but we don't even knew how Mandela looked. Maybe you would have said, it's me, here I am. I said, no, we're going to march to look for, we're going, we must release Mandela. We're going to John Foster Square. Um, that was a time, as we marched, we wanted to go to town, but the, the, the hippos blocked the Avenue Canada under the bridge. They blocked the the road, two hippos. And we tried to cross, this, there was a, there's a stream there, we tried to cross by a big pipe, and then the Ampus nail carriers and the other soldiers, those young, those young boys, there wasn't birdshot, there wasn't rubber bullets, there was sharp point ammunition. They opened fire on us. In that field called Pennyville today, I think they should consider putting a monument there, Mr. Um, Mr. Mayor, there. People were killed, they were mowed down there. We ran. We ran to just to any type of transport there in New Canada Road. We jumped on buckies. We jumped into taxis. It wasn't these taxis of today. Valiants, Six Mabon, Valazas. <laughs> to go back. As we went back, Mama Winnie was there. I'll tell you the corner, you can go and check it there by, by, the, by the actor Peterson Morrill. You'll see, maybe you see me too. 
I, I, was, I, was, I was beautiful, but now I'm only handsome. No. <laughs> As we went down, we, we met up with uh, some members of the Committee of Ten. Mama Winnie was there. It was at the bottom of Lourdes. When Lourdes starts, it is Mother Street. You know, when you come down there, you turn the first one immediately left. That's Mother. And Stadium Road is the one that comes straight down. And Mama Winnie was standing there. She said to us, go home. The bulls are killing you. Don't defy. Don't throw stones. Go back home because you're going to die. We didn't listen. We were young. Youth with fires in our belly. And still excited about knowing politics and black consciousness and all of which would shout slogans. I don't remember the word Amandla was there, then it was power, power, that was it, it was scream. <laughs> so, Mama was addressing us and we didn't listen. We went ahead, you know that when you go straight with the road, north south, before you go to Orlando, you'll get a garage, the side was called Marabe garage. And the other side was where the Westland Administration board had the, had the these bottle stores, these bottle stores and things. I didn't go for a bottle store, please don't. They were guarded by soldiers. What we did then, ignoring what Mama Winnie said, we went and we took bricks and bottles and we wanted to disarm soldiers. We were getting on the bucket, the bucket, the bucket was proceeding from Soweto Highway, let's say towards uh, Zimslope, Midlands, just across the road that goes to Orlando Stadium. And we had to. <laughs> We were brave. We attacked them. We threw stones and bricks. And heaven forbid, they opened fire. They shot the driver's brains out. Besides the brains that was all over me in the field there by Pennyville. They shot the driver's brains out. They shot another guy through the end. How I got off that bucky, God knows, because the bucky veered into, I think it was the uh, Sibeko's house on your left. I wasn't supposed to be here today. I am supposed to be dead. And I'm sure I'm not talking in that I am alive. Do, we are in, in council, isn't it? I am alive. Okay. Just to make sure I'm not in heaven or hell. Um, we then, the afternoon, Mama was there the whole day. I, I didn't understand why didn't she go home and eat or something, because she was there with Mama V. In the afternoon, three o'clock, around three o'clock, wave upon wave of hippos came down in, from the, the, the deep roof side, right down. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. And we elected to attack them again with stones, you know? I don't know what we were thinking. Mama came out of the house from my best. Mama said, don't you listen. These guys are going to pick up Mama V for this, oh Lord, the next day they pick up Mama V. She said, they're going to arrest Mama V for what you are doing now. They're going to take, take Mama V away again. Mama v. Remember Mama V and Mama Winnie was always here by number four together. I see the daughter, Cicely, the one I stole the milk. It was her milk at the tank. Cicely, I think William is still at home there. He's living at the house. And um, we attacked them and we, you know, we were so politically naive. Later in 76, and this is now where I'm going to tell you something. Later in 76, I think, September somewhere, Mama, Mama Winnie introduced me to two guys. I don't know if they're alive. MK guys, the one's name, maybe you'll know him. His name is Opa. The other one's name is Rox. They, they, they sent us on missions to do certain things. A lot of missions. And Mama would let them talk to us while she has already told, her, told them what to tell us, but she would never tell us. She would send it via. And um, as I said, yes, one was very much engaged, seriously engaged. One day I saw something, and I don't know, but the daughters are here. I saw Mama had a gun. <laughs> Did you know that? I saw it when I saw it. I said, you. But... Um, Mama was a soldier in any case. But um, let me move on. In 1997, this was a time that we formed uh, Sowe Joker in Daba Yakubega, in Sturikhan, and. And um, it was strange, I got a call from two persons asking me the same question. 
I first got a call from Dr. Don Matera. Melaiti, I hear races. What's a color put this is D? What are you doing? And then, not long after that, I think they caucused, I'm sure. Mama called me and she said, My boy? No, not my boy. Keke, Keke. What's going on? Why are you giving Tokyo such headaches? I was at pains to explain about marginalizations. You know, saying things such as, Ma, you know, this is reverse racism. Why does Orlando get flat rate? My grandmother is living there, and we, Nur we are the stepchildren of, of these things. Why are we marginalized? No, 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 this is not fair. And um, Mama was keeping quiet right through my explanations. Quiet, eh? quiet, very quiet. As if I'm, Mama, you there? I'm listening. She just ended by saying, Keke, remember, we never taught you this. We never taught you. We spoke about non-racism. We never spoke about multi-racism. We never spoke about colors and all those things. We spoke about what must happen, what is going to happen one day for us, for what, what we must focus upon, and don't deviate from that. I listened. Then came 1999. Shoo. I went to Parliament. I met Mama again in Parliament. Okay, let me put it this way. When Mama was there, <laughs> Mama wasn't always there. <laughs> I remember Mama said, what the hell, I had fucked up. What the hell, can I kiss you? What must I debate so much here? No, 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 no. That this who does nothing, who never, they can go and cook Parliament regular. Mama. But there was times Mama was there. <laughs> and um, again, obviously, I would have the occasion to sit with Mama and Patricia Dallo. When Mama said one day to, to me, she spoke to me, but she looked at Patricia. I said, I don't know why she did that. Patricia, you know what? Keke Leza is now off the street, not making fires and burning tires, giving Tokyo hell. But we are proud of you, Keke. You are the first <laughs> Mama Keke. Yeah, you were the first MP from North Kasek in a democratic government. Do you know that? You should, you, you should feel honored. You were the first. Hey. So, um, we, had, we had lots of other engagements. I remember one engagement was when Patricia spoke about spice in the, but in the, in the movement. And I don't know what Mama was laughing, it was a joke. And she said, Patricia, I don't know if she pronunciation for Patricia, it's so long, Patricia, something like that, singing like. And she said, um, was my name there? You know, she, she made fun of it, and it was a serious thing, and Mama was laughing and said, Patricia, is my name there? <laughs> and she was making fun of it, and uh, I'm not going to go into all the long and the shorts of things, but... Um, I can, I can narrate all day, but um, I wanted to give Mamukwena some of my minutes because I'm going to conclude. <laughs> I think it is time to thank you good people sitting here today for the sacrifice, for the pain. I, was it Zinzi? Or the other sister, I think I saw you at the UDF rally there somewhere one day when it was in the 80s. <laughs> yeah, you'd buy a hotel. Yeah, but I want to th <laughs> I want to thank you for having delivered such a beautiful soul to our struggle. I want to thank God, your ancestors, for having allowed me. KK, Ben, Basil for you now, no. counselor for the rest, um, for having delivered such a beautiful soul to us, such a strong woman, such a leader, such a mother, grandmother. We will always remember, thank you for having delivered such a person to us in this country to help us be liberated as we are today. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.
Uh, thank you very much. Mbonge guwe somlomo. Mbulise umdini. Ga Mandela matikizela. Mtandu bulisa. Usoto lopo. Mbulise nawe somlomo. Mbulise uonke ya makansela. Akona. Mbulise, no mpagati okona la indlini. Mbulise, na bonke, abafundisi bakhona nabangani, e, na matabane, kotwa, mbulise nazo, izugulwane, zaka chimso fasonke mpanza. Mbulise, ipati lida yetu, musanovela. And lastly, mbulise, to the Commander-in-Chief of the Economic Freedom Fighter, Silo Julius Malema. We can't honor Umama Uwini Mandela while the city of Johannesburg still has colonial and apartheid statues and symbols. It's a direct contradiction to her beliefs and her fiercely, what she fiercely fought for in her life. The plucky statue must fall from the city so that her soul can rest in revolutionary peace. The continuous singing of this stem in the national anthem is also a clear indication that we have a cosmetic reconciliation as a nation. Speeches read on such occasions seldom give a fair reflection of the person under the circumstances gather to pay homage to. We most often, especially comrades, capture in the moment wherein we are called in to pay homage to a person we have known for a lesser period, but made big impact in our lives. It is precisely in such a solemn occasion that I imagine W.B. Eats would have composed the words, where my friend's portraits hang and look thereon, Islands history in their Lindman's trace. Think where man's glory most begins and ends. And say my glory was that I had such friends. In our collective view, Mama Winnie Mandela is the stone that the builders rejected. She is the first black female president South Africa was deprived of. Her irreplaceable. Her irreplaceable contribution to the liberation of our people was a subject of both 
patriarchal and white minority, white minority suppression. Her well deserved, tried and tested, rising to the highest seat in the country, was only suppressed by the patriarchal dominated liberation movement and its complicity with white minority establishment. They hated her because she was a black woman with her own mind and who enjoyed the collective popular, popular confidence of the masses of our people. They hated her because she never compromised her message of radical black emancipation. There is no doubt that in the last two decades of the liberation struggle, Mama Winnie Mandela carried the revolutionary aspirations of black communities on her shoulders when silence, despondency, fear, and political apathy triumph over the collective spirit of emancipation following the exile of the liberation movement and the imprisonment of its leadership. It is Mama Winnie Mandela who exhumed this collective spirit, inspiring every street, inspiring every township, inspiring every village, every town, every city, and every country in the world to the brave murderous apartheid regime and once more demanded the unconditional freedom of a black child. From Soweto to Selma, from London to Sydney, scores of students, youth, workers, and all people of the world joined the international anti-apartheid movement, inspired by her tenacity, perseverance, bravery, daring and infectious love. From Morogoro to Lusaka, many young men and women signed up in the ranks of Mkonto Esizwe, inspired by her fighting spirit. She affirmed both the love and anger of black people, always committed to the right to defend their lives even in arms in the face of a deadly apartheid evil. Her memory will live long and one day a better society, free from patriarchal hatred that suppressed her, rise to be a president. Well, embrace a talent black woman to lead our nation. In her name, we vow to accelerate and deepen the fight against patriarchy within our own ranks and in society in general. Her name we vow to bestow upon this land an era of economic freedom in our lifetime, one that she believed in, encouraged and commended the EFF for declaring and pursuing it. In our eyes, she is the perfect image of the divine. She taught us to love ourselves our country, and continue the struggle for the total emancipation of our people and continent. We call on the city to move beyond granting her the freedom of the city, but also in a legacy, accelerate the poor pro policies the EFF has proposed. We call on the city to accelerate the housing delivery to the poor, quality health care through the constructions of clinics in every ward create quality jobs through insourcing core functions and eliminating apartheid special patterns. Mr. Mayor, the commemoration of Mama Winnie Mandela must not only just be an annual celebration, but it must be a daily celebration. She never left Soweto, unlike her many counterparts when they became members of parliament. She stayed committed to the people of Soweto. Therefore, as the EFF, we put a proposal that in her honor and her commitment to the people of Soweto, there must be a statue of Mamawini that must be erected each and every entrance of Soweto so that she becomes the first symbol we see when we come back to Soweto. But also, she must be the last symbol we see when we leave Soweto on a daily basis, even for future generations to come, so that we can be able 
to honor Mama and give her the child role that she has played in the liberation of this country. We have committed ourselves. We have committed ourselves as the EFF to say that our land is our heritage. Red roses of the revolution multiply, they don't die. She'll forever remain the mother of the nation, Umama Wetu, Umama Wini, Mandela. We honor her and we thank the city for ensuring that we do have this special occasion of honoring Umama and we thank the Mandela family and also the NC for giving us Umama Wetu. Amanda. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the Executive Mayor, in his absentia, uh, leaders of political parties present, family of Umamuini, uh, fellow councillors, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Speaker, Tina Jenge IFP. I sing a bars with Mamu in the Umfane Luguba and Niggers in Kulego at Olop Nagubage speaker is Carti CIA soup over Sony Pay Amakawi to Giscating a second cabin. Mobalabaholi by being as Umsebe zabawa nzeli sizwe unga gana. Sbe ni tlanta getina wa IFP ngoba the Prince of Wapindange ene wazi ile uskia elaka kulu nga laba holu tiba ngaboba. Umamu ini masiti jenge IFP asinga bazu uta nigezwe inkulego etolopa sikishiso uti Namtanje abanye bethu singamakhansela eh siyahlonishwe emphakathini le nkululeko yalwelwa omamuwini omamuwini baholi ethi nasiyisizwe bengabheke inzuzo besikhola nje namhlanje abaholi bethu emphakathini makukhona ukufuneka kwenzeke kufanele kokuqala babheke ukuthi khonani fobona Oh, Mamu in Nabanya Bahole Sebatu, Lem Tabeni. Mabenga Fuga was born in Amtanje Sinji. See it as Mago Corners Funagas Quenzel is Israel. Scales Fun was the corner and fourteen. Umamu in Omunio Abaholi Abanigelang and Piloyabo. Ukuba bahambe tolope na bebe shala gilo. Bati ngselo kwenye ndao belwe la lengulege se sito lilo. Kwi ikini sukutu mamu ini. Ilu ngu no mholi. Weke mle enzi. Koto wa mshambe tina. Jenga bandu je basecho wani speng. Jenga bandu basa South Africa. Kuninge sikfunda glaba holi. Umangi iti kuninge sikfunde glaba holi. Sifunde ugutu bane sibi indi ngoba na mtanje. Sinabantu besifaza naba ninga bakwa zukutatu buholi ngokulu kulega befunde go mamu ini. Nga pambilini bekwa zuo guta besifaza ne. Baba antu wabanga lungela uktina enda wene sekishi. Pati na mtanje o mamu ini bakwa zilu kufundisa. 
ukuthi noma ubani manje nesibindi nenkolelo into enakholelwa kiyo angathathi sizwa yena sophambi sithi ke thina i IFP yakholelwa kakhulu emsebenzini owenziwe uma muhini naba nyabaholi esithi asukeni la siqhubekele phambili kodwa nakububuka ukuthi ubuhole sinabo namhlanje akubona lobo uma muhini ababebulwela uma ubheka emphakathi yethu kunenkohlakalo kakhulu amathubo omsebenza wekho izinga lobugebengu liphezulu kakhulu akhona ke lokho kwakulwelwa abaholi bethu uma sidlulela phambili isizwe sethu sidinga ukubuyela eyimpandeni zethu oma muwini nabanye abaholi bethu uma bengavuka namhlanje babuka ingane zethu zilwa nothisha ekoleni kungabalimaza kakhulu akhona lokho kwakulwelwa kodwa ke namhlanje sibhekene naleso simo sithi ke kafishane speaker ukhlonishwa kama muwini yinto ebaleke kakhulu nakuba yenzeke ngasekho inhlela into njoba sengike ngasho yenzeke saphila ngoba ma yenzeke saphila iyisize ekuthini awazi umsebenzi awenzile alale azi ukuthi abantu bakithi bayakubone ngakwenza bayakubonge ngakwenza kuyamsiza naye lokho ngalawo mazwi sithokoza kakhulu Mr Speaker Thank you, Speaker. Honorable Mayor, the Mandela and Madikizela family, the President of the African Independent Congress, MP um, Mandlagalo, the Chairperson of the AIC in the province of Gauteng, Sibuila and Godiana, the Treasurer of the AIC in Gauteng, Thomas Mvundla, the African Independent Congress uh, councillors and all councillors present. Mr. Speaker, it is such a heartwarming ceremony where the council confers the Freedom of the City Award posthumously on Mama Nomzama Winnie Madigizela Mandela. It is a great honor to the African Independent Congress to be part of this history-making event, where the mother of the nation is given the highest honor that the council can confer upon any individual or group. Mama Winnie Madigizela Mandela has shown resilience and tenacity for us all. She was and still is a role model to many mothers in South Africa and the rest of the world. Being a single mother for so many years, while her husband was detained on an island, yet managed to raise such incredible children with respect and dignity. She did all this while continuing her work as an activist, who never sold out the democratic struggle and not even the movement, the liberation movement that she was a part of. Speaker, Mama Winnie was a woman who led us out of dark days with the strength, passion, and determination that lights in each of us the will to do more and to be more. She made sacrifices for the sake of freedom, endured imprisonment and beatings, was separated from her family, yet she endured and conquered. It is also important to take note of the fact that some decisions taken by our government may not be in line with the spirit of Mama Winnie, the fact that children as young as 12 has access to condoms 
and the pill and can have an abortion without their parents' consent, as implicated in the Children's Act of 38 of 2005, which came into effect on 1 July 2007. Decriminalization of prostitution, which came into effect in 2017, and this year's decision to decriminalize Dacha, which is the gateway to drugs. These decisions may not help us to continually propagate what the mother of the nation stood for. She was always encouraging young people to pursue education for the sake of serving the people of South Africa and the continent. How then shall we get them educated if we pass such laws? Nevertheless, I would like to congratulate Mama on the Freedom of the City Award. May the spirit of Mama Winnie live forever. I thank you. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, the Executive Mayor, uh, Councillor Amun Mashaba, Speaker of Council, Councillor Vasco da Gama, Chief Whip of Council, Councillor Wex, leaders of political parties, fellow councillors, city manager, managers of office and the officials of council, distinguished guests, family of uh, Winnie Madikizela Mandela, the media. Allow me to greet you all. Mr. Speaker, as, the, as a proud representative of the African Christian Democratic Party, I'm honored that I am able to share in this significant and historic occasion the confirmation by the city of Johannesburg of the title of freedom of the city to the late Mrs. Winnie Madikisala Mandela is testament of the commitment towards the acknowledgement those who have and of those who have played a pivotal role in the struggle for democracy. Today, the actions and wisdom of Mama Winnie, as she was fondly known, continue to aspire others. A fierce and indomitable character continues to be guiding, the guiding light for many in South Africa, as she exemplified how to embody strength, fortitude, and convictions. Bestowing this honor, on an iconic figure of the liberation struggle who was an opposer of gender discrimination, promoter of human rights and equality, and most of all, someone whose lifelong dedication was geared toward the social upliftment of our marginalized communities. Mr. Speaker, it is imperative that all South Africans stand united, irrespective of our political affiliation, in, celebrating, in celebration of Winnie Mandela's legacy and take up the baton of eradicating the scourge of gender-based discrimination and violence. As the African Christian Democratic Party, we remain committed to protecting our most vulnerable citizens and inculcating a value-based society with emphasis on integrity, justice, honesty, and respect. It cannot be overemphasized that without the restoration of these social values, we will not see the restoration of the moral compass of our nation. Speaker, it is our shared responsibility and duty as public representatives of the residents of this dynamic city called Johannesburg to take up responsibility and stewardship which embodied the life of Winnie Mandela. We should be compelled to serve. We should be motivated towards enhancing our democracy. We should remain steadfast in exercising our duties towards shaping a future that we all can be beneficiaries of. In closing, Mr. Speaker, may we continue to remember the profound richness that epitomized the life of Winnie Mandela. May we be united in our collective humanity to inculcate an ethos based on uni unity, peace, success, and equality. I thank you.
Thank you, Speaker. Executive Mayor, Councillors, Officials, Beloved Guests, I greet you all. Speaker, when you arrive at the airport, the first, the first person you meet is a shoeshine man. He welcomes you warmly to the country by offering to polish your shoes. This tenderly welcome may deceive you. It may deceive you into thinking that you are special, important, and well appreciated. But we know, but we know is the shoe that are of value to him as there is always a prize attached to them. So is the way we sometimes make our female heroine feel. The level of importance is always attached to a prize, a man, a, a man stature. Speaker, Mama Winnie, Mama, Mama Winnie Nomza Momatigizela Mandela has proven that if you want something, if you want something said, you must ask a man. If you want something done, you must ask a woman. These are words of Margaret Thatcher, whom like, the other, whom, like the mother of the nation, has proven the fact that a society only progresses, only progresses when phenomenal women's voice is affecting change. The conferment of the freedom of the city of Johannesburg posthumously post upon Mama, upon Mama Nomzamo Winnie Matigizela Mandela is a noteworthy gesture in, in honor of her commitment and stewardship. In leading the country of South Africa out of the dark ways, out of the dark days with the strength, passion, and determination, we need to continually demonstrate that feminism isn't about making women strong. Women are already strong. It is about change. It, it is about changing the way the world perceives that strength. We do, we do not meet to honor just another woman, a wife. We honor an independent thinker, a leader in her own right. Speaker, on behalf of Al Jamaa, I would like to congratulate Mama Winnie Mandela and the, the family for the award. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Honorable Speaker, Executive Mayor, Executive Committee, fellow councillors and officials, the Matikizela Mandela family, members of the gallery, greetings. As a representative of the Patriotic Alliance, I am honored and a bit overwhelmed, I might add, to speak on such a huge struggle icon as Mawini because there's just much that can be said about this rock of a woman. So in my research, I've learned the, fo the following. Born in Bizana in 1936, according to our South African history, Winnie Madikizela Mandela first began realizing the injustices of, apartheid, of the apartheid regime at the tender age of nine years where at the end of World War II, she tagged along with her father to a town hall where a gathering for the celebration of the end of the World War, World War II was underway. But to her dismay, this gathering was for whites only. Another incident was when she had noticed a black man crouching while breaking bread to share with his wife while she was breastfeeding, only to be disrupted by a young white boy who actually kicked the father in trying to get them to disperse from the front of their shop, stating that he will not tolerate blacks, and not in those words, to come and make a mess in front of their shop. And one can only imagine how this was digested by Mama Winnie. This to me meant her awakening to the injustices and the prejudices of the then country, the, uh, the apartheid rule country. She was fortunate in a sense that 
the education syllabi was customized uh, or changed uh, only around the 1950s and managed to complete a junior certificate in uh, a certificate which was standard eight in an education system that was on par with her white peers. She matriculated at a Methodist missionary school in Tumbu where she was exposed to teachers who were all Fort Hare graduates. And many suggest that this is where her activism started, which was indeed a long time before meeting Utata Nelson Mandela. In one instance, Mawini, in her capacity as a social worker, she was particularly affected when she discovered the, the infantile mortality rate in Alexander Township, where she discovered that there were 10 deaths per every 1,000 black children that were born. These factual stories and many more are a clear indication that Mawini stood under no man's shadow. She realized the one fundamental truth as reiterated by a rap artist friend of mine, Mr. Emmanuel Mabonzol, where in one of his pieces he writes, and I quote, whoever got them ruling over us is somebody. I'm somebody too, unquote. And Mawini demonstrated that by keeping the fire of the struggle burning for 27 years at a huge sacrifice of her family, her own well-being, including being incarcerated into solitary confinement and banished and isolated, all for this privilege that we as politicians today in this council enjoy, regardless of the color of our skin. And by this ceremony, Honorable Speaker, this is where we have the honor and the privilege of saying thank you to the mother of our nation, now, it's up to us. Long live the spirit of Mama Winnie Mandela, Matikizela, long live. I thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Executive Mayor, Chair of Chairs, the Mandela family and the Matigizela families, fellow councillors, ladies and gentlemen, I greet you all today. It is an honor and a privilege to stand here and be part of this august event of conferring the city of Johannesburg to our hero and our icon, and our mentor, Mama Winnie Mandela. Mama struggled with the poorest of the poor. She lived with the destitute. There is no better candidate who deserved more to be honored like this. She was the city of Johannesburg herself. There is no corner that she never walked in and help the destitute. Mama didn't look at the, at the boundaries that we are building along ourselves today to say you belong where you are what. So on behalf of the UDM, we are saying it's a pity that she only get honored posthumously. Mama deserved more than this. She's one of those people that we grew up looking up to who were never recognized as the people who struggled. Very few people who endured what Mama went through. She was humiliated and she would always come up with that wonderful smile of hers. We will always remember Mama for what she did, but we hope that we are moving as this nation because Mama didn't get the name of being the mother of the nation as a favor or by mistake. She mothered a lot. She mothered this nation during her time of struggle. We hope that the, 
honoring of people when they cannot do anything about those honors will be the thing of the past. Thank you.
was Mandela's wife. I, I became a nobody. Here I am now losing myself and being absorbed into this, this name. Yeah, I am married, but uh, I am still winning. So that's happening. And uh, the reason why I fought as hard as I did to run for I wanted it to know that it was Winnie Mandela and not Mandela's wife. And that it was a woman. And I would take on the enemy as much as they oppressed me. I decided I will fight them to the last drop of my blood and I will show them that women. It is natural for any two parents, no matter what circumstances exist, to be deeply attached to each other. There was a bond nothing would break between us. We didn't necessarily have to be together or to live together. I've never lived with him in the first place, in a number of us and in humanity, in our families. So uh, uh, it was on hindsight, very painful. I was the most unmarried and married woman. It is possible, of course, that uh, my father foresaw what uh, would happen in the future. Because I know for the fact that uh, he wanted a boy. And the day I came, so he got me up as a boy. I looked at the cookie and goats and sheep. 
like I was a boy and I used to go to the farm and my father's white corn fields and I, I played them with uh, seeds that boys do and he told me that that would be as tough as hell and he didn't know that he was shaking before the hard life that they are his and I'm very grateful for him that he brought me up as a boy.
City of Johannesburg, Metropolitan Municipality. The city of Johannesburg, in the province of Gauteng, South Africa, confers by unanimous resolution of the council, dated 24 May 2018, the honorary freedom of the city upon Nonzamo Winnie Madigizela Mandela, posthumously, accordingly, council resolves that the freedom of the city of Johannesburg be conferred upon her for outstanding contributions to the struggle for democracy and freedom in South Africa, to hereby admit her to be a free woman of the city of Johannesburg, in witness whereof the seal of the city of Johannesburg is hereunto affixed on this 25th day of September, 2018.
commence the award ceremony, I'll ask the protocol officer to usher the chief report counsel, counsel Kevin Watts, and the other protocol officer will usher the leader of the official opposition party to join the award ceremony. Counsel Makungo. The award ceremony begins. We see the protocol officer handing over the pitch containing the scroll to the acting secretary of cancer. She then proceeds and hands the box to the city manager, Dr. Lukorelli. Dr. Lukorelli will now move to present the scroll to the executive player, Councillor Mashaba. The science scroll rolled inside the pinch wooden box to Her Royal Highness Princess Venani Damini.
Our protocol officer will proceed and hand over to the Speaker of Council the next insignia to be awarded to the family.
They are fighting. Um, good afternoon. You know, it was, um, I, I, I just had to reflect on it because, you know, I was actually looking forward to going last. Um, but in hindsight, I realized that, you know, going last is actually not that great because you end up probably repeating everything else that everyone had said. But uh, nonetheless, one shall go ahead. Um, and uh, hopefully I'll have some words of relevance to share with this house. Executive Mayor, Your Excellencies, Your Excellency Zanani Mandela and Zinzi Mandela, members of the Executive Council, members of the various parties that are represented within this house, friends, and very importantly, family. Good afternoon to you all. Um, thank you. It is uh, also very important for me to acknowledge the unfortunate passing of uh, Minister Mulewa. We extend 
a warm message of support to our family. I'd like to begin also by acknowledging and giving congratulations to Kosatu. I mean, the past year we had very positive news, and I'd like to congratulate them for their selection of the first black woman president of Kosatu. It's very important that in this time and era, we focus on very active politics, establishing the need for change, but ensuring that that effect takes place in real time. The history of the political and social and labor organizations within South Africa has been limited to what they could do simply because every decision was a direct threat to the attaining of liberation. We fast forward to today. I would like to see that all political parties, both social and labor, are willing to take it upon themselves as custodians of the various issues that they continue to take, take ahead. Issues such as gender diversified equality, issues such as the repatriation of land, and issues such as ending of poverty and providing education and free health care for everyone. I know maybe it's not worth to mention, but there is something that we must consider. I recall uh, some time back, a very famous organization, um, you know, had this opportunity to elect a, a woman as a president of the organization. Maybe we won't name any names. But, uh, you know, maybe it's not for anything. They could have had a billion reasons why they probably did not go that route. But, you know, jokes aside, um, one is simply saying that each and every political organization has its founding manifesto. The policies which give direction to the daily toil, and particularly, each and every one of these political parties are responsible for the hope that they create because the moment you lose hope, you lose hope of the people. It also goes without saying that the lack of women's celebration lends us in the state we are currently in. And we struggle to reconcile this reality. We need real, active celebration of women. The celebration of women in their glory the celebration of women in their greatness and the celebration of women in their fortitude. As I speak here today, on behalf of the family, I hope to leave a very clear message, a message on the importance of a diversified inclusion and the celebration of human excellence. The concept of conferment within the city a conferment has a very basic uh, meaning. It's the handing over of a title in honor of a particular individual. And it's very important to note that when people come to this conclusion of the need to honor a particular individual, it's a resultant effect of, of dialogue, exchange, debate, until this collective eventually comes out with one unified opinion. The first recorded academic conferment actually took place in the 13th century. The new masters and doctoral degree holders are welcomed into this class of exclusive academic community. As much as this concept is a very global one, it is also a very South African initiative as we've experienced today. And I'd like to utilize this quote to paint a picture of the history of conferment within this country. Those from the struggle who are now busy in governmental posts should no longer be evaluated by their past dedication, but instead by their current performance in a democratic government. Meanwhile, meanwhile, others, heroes from the past, are busy raking in capital in the economic sector. The long and short of it is that South Africa is in a nascent state, 
and in essence breeds the failure to honor memory. Young people whose childhood was in the world of iron and blood know little about those whose long-term dedication were crucial to bringing about the new democracy and whose lives represent a moral pinnacle for our time, perhaps for all lifetime. It is therefore the duty of universities as well as the privilege to honor those whose lives have been exemplary. This is so that history may be written in an indelible script from which the young may draw understanding and inspiration." Close quote. Now that quote comes from the conferment of uh, Mam Fatima Mir, who in fact was a great friend of Umama, and that conferment took place at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Now, having acknowledged that we're bringing it closer to home now, being here in Johannesburg, the city of Johannesburg has confirmed, has conferred rather, an incredible list of individuals. Those who have contributed to the rehabilitation of a nearly forgotten South Africa. It's important to acknowledge that these recipients are a node in a complex structure of friends, family, comrades, and therefore receive such accolades on behalf of a collective who gave them the strength to move on and persevere. The unfortunate reality is that not everyone would be given this opportunity of acknowledgement. And this type of characteristic is also shown in the past recipients who've actually received these various um, conferments. I give an example. When Advocate Bezos and Mr. Mlangeni were conferred by the city, Advocate Bezos had the following words. What I found comforting was that the city decided to honor Andrew, my friend, and myself. I thank you. When Mr. Mlange and his son received his award on his father's behalf, he is quoted as saying, this city stood as a beacon for our struggle and witnessed the hardships and the sacrifices made by all the revolutionaries of the struggle. And therefore, I would like to think that if Umama was here with us, and if she had a few words to say, maybe her words would be like this. And mind you, I must just disclose, she was not one to really limit her messaging or her words. So prepare yourself. <laughs> to the great women of South Africa, to the resilient comrades who fought these bloody enemies, from the training camps in Angola, Zambia, to the sabotage operations at the enemy's doorstep. I salute you and I appreciate this honor. To my, comrade, to my comrade and confidant, Chris Ani, they brutally assassinated you to cripple our fight for land and economic ownership. Unaware that for as long as our blood flows through the children and grandchildren of this country, South Africa will come to a new dawn, and the African child will be restored to Ingosi Namakosigaz. Amanda, I love you all. Salute. <laughs> it's, it's, it's also very important to touch on the political history, I guess, of conferment. There is an extended political, I guess, political objective of conferments in South Africa, that the freedom of the city recognizes those who contributed to the struggles for freedom and democracy. And as I look at the list of recipients, it is clear that the African National Congress produced a plethora of many great leaders. That said, it is also the very reason that the African National Congress should also place an emphasis on restoring the essence of positive leadership 
that is true to serving to the, peop the people of South Africa. <clears throat> and in the time we're living in today, there's also a very clear political climate to consider that is represented by many. And I would like to share this message with someone whom I can refer to as a brother, Mr. Julius Malema. And although, and although we do not know each other personally, Mr. Musi Maimane, the both of you have the potential to be the greatest young leadership the African continent has seen. I, I implore you to reflect on this. Allow your leadership to remain true to the struggle of freedom and true to the struggle of the African child. Yourselves, together with your colleagues, are equal to the task of this collective of recipients. And without the political jostling, you have earned your support. So do not ever doubt that but allow your politics to steer us in the right direction, in the just right direction, in the united direction, without isolating communities and always never forgetting the forgotten voice. As I continue, I'd also like to touch on a concept of greatness. Now, I want to touch on greatness not, not as a concept of the iconic referral, but rather the concept of the description of greatness as one's character. Therefore, making greatness an innate force that one chooses to exude. You can describe this greatness, therefore, in many ways. You are galactic. You are colossal. You are heavenly and you are magnificent. This concept of greatness in a space such as South Africa, we need to acknowledge something very important, that one's greatness is seldom seen without extraordinary challenges. Greatness, being colossal, being heavenly, is a resultant outcome of one's adversity in overcoming challenges. In the context of South Africa, we know many challenges that we faced. The liberation struggle on apartheid, the rent boycott, the formation of the Freedom, the freedom Charter, the Soweto uprising, the Women's March, and the Defiance Campaign, just to name a few. The creation of this greatness had a resultant effect, and that was its achievements. And we, as we sit here, are the, are the beneficiaries of that achievement. These complex and dynamic demonstrations against oppression gave rise to the reason why we acknowledge and celebrate those that have walked this earth and those that continue to live amongst us. Our presence here, all of us, highlights our gratitude to these great individuals we are all here are the direct beneficiaries of these selfless expressions of greatness. We have been empowered with the freedom of choice, with the freedom of expression, and even more recently, the freedom of being able to utilize the sacred herb in many, many spaces. <laughs> It, it, it seemed like that, uh, you know, that new policy does not sit well with some people. But I, I think we'll, we'll, all, we'll all work through it. <laughs> all this considered, um, we still have a lot of work cut out for us. And that is to attain true freedom of identity. Freedom of identity as a result of freedom of economic wealth, as a product of land ownership and the ownership of means to production. Once again, let's make it clear 
South Africa, the South African land, us as the South African people, are the ultimate, ultimate beneficiary of these sacrifices. I'd also like to speak on the person that also brought us here, Omamwini Matigizela Mandela. And I have a quote. The overwhelming majority of women accept patriarchy unquestionably and even protect it, working out as the result in frustration not against men but against themselves in their competition for men as sons, lovers, and husbands. Traditionally, the violated wife bides her time of loads of built-in aggression on her daughter-in-law, so men dominate women through the agency of women themselves. Nomzamo Winima Digizela Mandela. I must say there's very clear messaging in that quote of hers, but I think there are the small nuances that may be missed, and this is why. I do not recall a single time my grandmother spoke negatively about the woman she knew. I do not recall a single time my grandmother spoke negatively about the woman she worked with, with about the woman she fought with, and about the woman she raised many households with. I do not recall a time when my grandmother spoke negatively about the union between woman and man. Instead, regardless of the difficulties, she remains steadfast that the success of an individual, regardless of their sex, is an enhanced by its collective and that the greatness of self begins in the consistent support of the family structure, woman and man, wife and husband, and all the beautiful celebrations that come with this union. She was the product of a loving family and an affirmation that successful societies are molded by the family structures that complete them. Winnie Mandela in memory, we as a family, and I guess we, have a, as, we, we as a country, have gone through great lengths in preserving Nomzamo Winnie Matigizela Mandela's memory. And the most important way, I guess, is to preserve her memory locally, but also consider preserving her memory on the global scale. That we leave constant reminders to people that she too, in fact, walked this earth. As I reach my closing, <clears throat> it's important to share with you that as a family, as a progeny of Winnie Matigizela Mandela, we in fact are the custodians of a near brilliant legacy that is represented by both Nelson Mandela and Winnie Matigizela Mandela. Therefore, as a family, we will never play to this game of needing to dichotomize this unique and loving couple, who are the proud parents who conceived Ambassador Zanani and Ambassador Zinzi Mandela. So I'm aware that as the year progresses, there will be an announcement that, that the Cape Town International Airport will be called the Nelson Mandela International Airport. It is important to note that the progeny of Nelson and Winnie Mandela continue to support these decisions because it clearly celebrates the perpetual successes of this couple. All we require as South Africans and as fellow thinking South Africans that there is a genuine and a fair expression of all those who contributed to the liberation of this country. Without the commercialization 
of the South African liberation struggle. So I look forward to that day that when I leave my home in Soweto and I drive on Clipspeight Road, which will be called Winnie Mandela Road, and when I take the highway, the N1 highway, which is now called the Lillian Goy N1, and as I take William Nicole, which would be called Fatima Mir Drive, I get on to South African Airways, but at this point it's called Steve Biko Airlines. I take off from Lanseria, which is now called Nomzamo Winnie Matigizela Airport, and I land safely in Cape Town at Nelson Mandela International Airport. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very, very simple concept that through such efforts such as this conferment and reclaiming the South African landscape, through the naming of buildings and key destination points, the very preservation of this country's history will continue as remembrance exists everywhere we see it. And that we should never forget, that acknowledging all of those who have contributed to this freedom that we experience today is something that should be celebrated both wildly and boldly. I thank you. Thank you. 